Hello everybody, welcome to Undead Overexplained Game 6 up against RBT with um, Lizardmen. Let me just get in some kind of formation instantly here. Rule of 5, usually a good bet. He's won the toss and decided to receive. He's got... I didn't see what inducements he took. Um, is that K? I still don't really know what inducements he took. Um, okay, well, never mind. <laughs> his skills wise, he's got a sidestep, the chameleon skink. He's got a loner, runner, a leap. That's why I'm a skink. He's only got four saurus. Oh my god, and a, and a crocs. Okay, so this is pretty good, isn't it? Um, kind of sucks that he's going to get to hit my mummies but I can't really protect them right with ghouls and stuff so yep okay this is this is it wow I don't know I don't know what he took as an inducement maybe a extra team training is maybe what he took I should have really been paying attention then, shouldn't I? Never mind. That, there's, there's, a good, there's a good tip for you. There's a good tip for you. Was watch your opponent when they're picking their inducements so you have a clue what they've taken. <laughs> there you go. Very valuable. Very valuable insight there for you. You can't read it though, right, Pendor? Can you? Can you? You've got to work it out, right? You've got to deduce it. Because he's got, just got three rerolls, right? I don't know that he's bought that reroll or he's bought the Apothecary. Um, you can see what he hasn't got, right? I can see that he hasn't got uh, like uh, Bloodwiser kegs. I can see that he hasn't got kegs, but I don't know if he induced the third. Re I think he'll have induced the third reroll, right? He probably had two reroll lizard men, and he's induced the third. Again, not that it matters, right? It's probably a reroll or a or an apple is what he's induced. Probably the reroll. We just don't. Know. So yeah, pay attention, and you will absolutely know. Hello, Chrissy B. So this is a brilliant uh, matchup, isn't it? Only four Saurus. That is absolutely fantastic. Normally, normally lizard men are absolutely terrifying with six, six Saurus and plus a Croxigo. Um, but with only four Saurus, they are very, very manageable. We're just going to base all of his Saurus and then tee off on his Skinks. Quite simple. Quite simple. Just basically base everything every single turn. It's, it's, the, it's the extent of the strategies in this game. Full contact, you know, like his Saurus just get to punch zombies, which doesn't do much. And uh, take out take out the ones that I can, like all of the trades here are bad for him, right, like just basically all of the trades are bad if there's a mummy on a Saurus well, he's stronger than Saurus and he's got mighty blow so he'll just dominate it, if there's if there's a zombie, if there's a Saurus and a zombie, well then they're hitting my worst player, even though they're hitting one two dice so and then all of my positionals like the ghouls and the whites, if they're on a skink it's terrible for the skinks No. <laughs> Failed to pick up an advance to him. Well, that's a little bit annoying, isn't it? It's a little bit annoying. I think I have to blitz this guy and then, like, base the ball. So, first things first. Stick him on him. Stick him on him. And... Is this guy just going to stand there? I guess he kind of has to. He's going to clear the path for all of the boys to mob the ball. Now the question is, do I follow? And I think the answer has to be yes. Go around 
inside there. He can't reach there, but he can reach here. And these guys can both go there. And then he's going to go here. So that uh, if this Saurus blocks this guy down, he can't assist the hit on the mummy. Because uh, he'll be in this guy's tackle zone. Also, it means he can only push him to there as well. So that this is a pretty good spot with this guy downed. He's only got one push. Now, he might just block with this, the Croxagore, of course. But... Um, that's the idea to kind of force, kind of forcing where your opponent can push your players and stuff can be quite good. So this is a little bit of excessive, right? Two players on the ball like this, it's not doing a, it's not doing like an amazing amount of work. But um, you know, you can just dodge away. But he, you know, it's it's something, isn't it? Hello, Hargrim. Hello, Ali Raider. Two hundred TV down. No, it's not. Is OCC in Blood Bowl three now? Hello, punter. Yeah. Hello, Magnus the Pink. Yeah. So, like, the reason that there's two on it is because he can blitz one, right? He can blitz one with a Saurus. Now, at the moment, I've got guard, which means he's got to hit with a um, Crocs first, and he can't hit with a Crocs first because he can't get the assist with a Crocs. So it's all it's all pretty good having this guard here. You know he can't hit this way, he, so it's yeah, it's all it's all pretty nice. This is probably gonna have to like hand off or dodge with the uh, skink, which you know Glorious. gives us an instant no, I eleven eleven percent to just basically win the game, right? And which is I will good. defend. I will defend. Hello. Hello, Paulus one three one. Thank you very much. Staying fantastic for thirteen glorious months. Oh yeah, over a year, four whole beaver, no, three whole beaver pregnancies, I know I said four, over three whole beaver pregnancies, and I know how long a beaver pregnancy is, unforgivable to get that, make that mistake, so he's done the eye cage here, which can work, okay, sometimes, but the thing about it is, it doesn't work versus strength three people, and it sure doesn't work against people with guard. Um, which of course I have both now this block is really nice isn't it this it's a blockless block but it uh, frees up two players here one to tag him which makes the blitz on the ball better I guess this guy can come around that's even better isn't it yep then I don't even have to make that block so let's bring him in first and let's stand this guy up and this guy safe moves first very safe block with block full power right so the play here is just to blitz him with block right there's no there's nothing else to think about Get that done first. Get the pow. Lovely jubbly. Uh, oh, shadowing. <laughs> Obviously follow to like, try and keep uh, tackle zones near the ball. <laughs> okay, good. Behind is good. Now he can come in there. Another tackle zone on the ball. Nice. Now, because I've already got three tackle zones on the ball, now it's tempting just to uh, make this punch, right? This punch, and then that gets us to mummy hit his crocs, which is way better. So, I I had, like... I kept my options open by moving this guy first. It was the safest move. Also, save us doing a blockless block. And now I get to be a little bit greedy and go 2D into 2D. The push is fine because we isolate him onto a zombie, which is great. Uh, it does mean we're going to have to follow onto this uh, Crocs if it's a push, which is not great. Um, yeah, because we don't want the Crocs free. Get to power him. 
into a removal. Amazing. I'm in my time bank here, so I have to be a bit quicker. Now, now the, the 1 in 9 here, or 1 in 81, is actually really annoying, but I still think it's right to do it, because, you know, I could roll a pow and hurt his skink. It's pretty good. So that was a pretty great turn, wasn't it? You can, um, you can possibly, like, one dice to free up the crocs, but then the crocs can't go anywhere because of this uh, mummy being here, right? You'd have to, you'd have to block down and then blitz Glorious. to get the no, crocs in the area, defend. which would be good for him. But then Until should I'm easily victorious. be able to deal with him now. And I will defend. Down two I players will defend. already. Looking dodgeless block. A dodgeless block. Hello, Papa Pikio. Thank you very much. Staying fantastic for seventy glorious months. That's a long time. More, glorious. More than I can easily no, do. No, I maths. won't give in <laughs> until I'm victorious, and I will defend. <laughs> I will defend. The alpha male is here on the blood bowl fields. These are my hunting grounds, and you, Jimmy, fantastic, are the next trophy I'm mounting on the wall. <laughs> Thanks very much, Steve. <laughs> Forty-three glorious months. That's nearly eleven beaver pregnancies. Um, yeah, over three, three and a half years, isn't it? What, what's Papa Pikio? That's great. It's nearly, it's nearly, it's nearly six years, isn't it? It's nearly six years. It's like five, five is sixty, isn't it? It's nearly six years. Unbelievable, and uh, lots of countless beaver pregnancies. Thank you very much. <laughs> so yeah, so he blitzes the Saurus to get in there, but he's not clearing all these tackle zones, so he's he's in a lot of trouble. He's in a lot of trouble, and it's not—it's not, not going to change unless he can get—he can get the ball scattered, which he's not going to do this turn. Ah, he could, right? He could—he um, could bring an assist in here, and then this guy could cancel this, and he could one D him for a scatter. But again, he just hasn't got the players to then to dislodge it all reliably, and then and then pick the ball up afterwards. Let me take off these. Good service. He just goes for the five plus pickup, which you know you can just you can just shake your head at that, and it's bad luck if they make it right. Okay, that was an incredible scatter for him. <laughs> that was an incredible scatter for him. But what we do have is this block ghoul ready to pick up at the end of everything. Um, now I like this block here. Because this gets us guard onto the Saurus, and it does give us a scatter, which, you know, something good could happen. Um, let's stand up this mummy first, safe moves first. We might be blitzing this mummy later, so we don't need to move him yet. And I think quite bad is quad skulls here. It's uh, rather bad, isn't it? So maybe, maybe put this guy here to cover against quad skulls. And... Uh, yeah, that, that's enough, because I, I don't want to care too much about a 1 in 12, 9, 6 chance. That was a little bit annoying. Because now we need two assists on here. Which is easily findable. So take these so that, you know, we get these two. Could have filled those two, but I want the further two in case it's not a knockdown. So I've still got the assists for the ghoul blitzing him. Can definitely follow here. Okay, out for out for my, yes, thank you. Out for my ghoul, wonderful. <laughs> right, so now um, this guy can three dice in. That's pretty safe. Gets a panel. I think I'll just stay because then it's stopping this skink getting out the back. Nice. So this is the... I mean, the ball is pretty safe. And we want this guy to maybe make a block afterwards. So let's just do the blitz here. I will just follow and then block with a zombie. 
So now all of these guys, they can't really block each other free. So that's alright. Like they technically can, but it's not easy for them. And uh, I will go here and make the kind of eye cage, right? The eye cage very good against Stunties. Because if they, you know, if, if you just try and cage normally, they'll be, uh, or like loose cage against them. Like if you leave a corner open, they can just make a bunch of dodges and get on a corner and then like get a 1D against you maybe. But if you eye cage, then they just can't get anything except an uphill. Now, of course, he can, he can uphill this, this mummy for a pow to free up this guy but then he can't get there because there's still a screen here so he'd have to he'd have to punch he'd have to uphill the mummy for a maybe just a push and then two dice this guy for a pow and then he can come through and two dice if he makes a bunch of dodges this is very hard to get a hit on the ball and plus I've got block and dodge so it's on my more survival player uh, that's it maybe I should have picked it up on the on the sneaky kit actually because I do want this sneaky kit to get dirty player um, but I'm kind of going result first. Maybe I shouldn't be. Okay, well, let's get him a one dice on the on the mummy here. Got my mummies like next to each other, so that but guard is protecting each other. Very nice. Yeah, three removals here isn't it? Is good, isn't it? Uh, like, I would push it with uh, Sneaky Git fouls, but actually what I'm probably going to have to do is uh, hand off to the Sneaky Git to get him to Dirty Player. <laughs> he can he can score two touchdowns this game, right, and get Dirty Player would be would be ideal for me. So yeah, he punches my, uh, my worst player here, which is fine. That's what I want. I want all of the Mighty Blow hits to be taken on zombies if possible. As should you, right? Like you know, obviously you want you want your opponent hitting your worst players if you can. And similarly, I want to be hitting his crocs ago with my uh, mummy if I can. Yeah, so he makes that dodge, so he gets to hit the. I could have not followed up right with the with the white last turn. Um, which would have denied him the possibility of that block, but I did like, you know, closing in on the skinks a little bit, made, made that tricky for him, so there was positional value in that. I don't think he did a blitz that turn, did he? Okay. So the guard can come in there to make this a three dice block, and the three dice blocks are pretty good. So let's... Uh, do that, stand him. Three dice this guy. Push him. And then follow, because this creates a chain to unbase the ball. And get to pow. I could put him there uh, next to the mummy. I don't want to though, I want to push him further away. So this is annoying, right? I want to blitz this guy and run forward, but I don't have to run forward. Like, I really don't have to run forward, right? So... As much as I want to run forward, I don't have to. I do want to hand off to this other guy eventually. So let's do the safest thing that I can, which is to blitz this skink with block. Get a cars. Nice. Uh, this was his drive, yeah. <laughs> yep, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now we count out where we can get to to make the eye cage. So 
to make him safe. And then block with the mummy. Okay, put this on onto the what's this guy? A zombie, right, put him on the zombie. Now we've got our guards abreast. Oh my god, and Kaz's crocs. So we take out, take out his most dangerous player. Very nice. He might be conceding soon, I don't know, because this seems to be going pretty horrendously for him. And then they leave the like blockless block with our mighty blow till the end. So now like the mummies are completely untouchable, right? They're strength five and they're next to each other guarding each other, so yeah, this is this is pretty horrendous for him. Pretty horrendous. There's a very good argument now, actually, for handing off to this white to try to get him a touchdown because it's you know it's harder to score on whites than it is on ghouls. And it's a shame that uh, this guy was stunned because otherwise he would have done the blitz on the skink and got the SPPs. But you know it's okay to get SPPs on ghouls. Yeah, this is, looks. I've had a bit of luck, but also, you know, he he had a lizard man team with only four swords, so he was down loads of card. He was just not in. There was just too many good trades for me, right? Like if he had if he had the full six Saurus, then uh, all of a sudden he's got too many like strong players for me to handle. But with him having limited number of Saurus, it was just too easy to handle. Which is why I think you always have to start with a Croxigol and one reroll. There will be a lizard man guide on the way. We'll have, but I'll, I'll also um, like individual setup things. You know, there was uh, I thought it was a bit unnecessary, but you know, there's people that like you know would say put the yeti on the LOS with Norse and stuff like this. So there's some value to like you know with there is individual considerations, isn't there? With like undead, of course, you don't want people to be able to hit your mummies if you can possibly help it. Removing a mummy is absolutely key. Um, and you know, like, so there are there are things to weigh up in specific formations. So I might do racial setup videos as well. Oh, dodging, dodging into a stun, classic. Okay, so move this guy forward. Block with block. Yes. Three dice him. No pal, never lucky. Dice again. I leave the mummy on this guy. Yep, that seems good, and him on him. And then I can try for the handoff, I guess, now. Eh? That seems quite reasonable. So it does suck that I'm not going to get to foul. But I really want a sneaky get dirty player. For the games. For the games where it matters. Brilliant. I could foul now, right? I've got um, I've got a reserve. And there's only going to be one KO roll for this before the second half, so I could actually have like fouled the skink or fouled the saurus, but there's still plenty of time for that. Yeah, there are there are like you know somebody was saying like he wanted a um, a chaos renegades like setup guide and uh, tactics, and it's like the tactics are pretty much. I mean, that's what the, like, I know these are long, um, but the, the tactics are somewhat, um, if not similar, exactly the same, right, between, between races, like, at the end of the day, Blood Bowl's Blood Bowl, and if you're going to do well with one, you're going to do 
Okay, so that, what I've done wrong here is um, this guy can blitz um, if he makes lots of dice rolls. But um, I'm going to try and do my best to stop him doing that. With this, this is the problem with trying to talk at the same time. Um, like, most of it's the same, right? Like, there are, like, you know, Dark Elves are different to... Um, okay, I'll re-roll this. Diced. Dark Elves are, of course, different to, like, Orcs, right? But they're all pretty similar once you get the hang of it. So, um, the subtleties are harder to... Harder to talk about, right? They're better to... I think this kind of thing is suited to those. This sort of run is kind of better suited to those sort of things, isn't it? You know. Um, God, it's hard. It's really hard, honestly, to ca try and think and play and read chat uh, all at the same time. So I do lose myself a little bit of times. But yeah, the subtleties of the tactics and that, I guess, is harder to do. Like make a video that simply condenses everything, right? Those kind of videos just aren't hard. There's there's just a whole lot in Blood Bowl, and it's hard to condense pretty much anything, really. So, but I'm gonna try anyway. I've got my uh, I've got my little channel on my Discord with like concepts. I, I really like the idea. I've got to do loads of race guides and. Uh, you know, which covers like skill selections and stuff, um, and then I think I think this is best, right? Just to just to stand here in an eye cage, so you can only uphill, and uh, that seems pretty good. And then I can like also stand in front, so he's going to make a bunch of dodges. And I've got block that can free it. Um, interesting that he stood everybody up. I would definitely have not done that. I think I should go for the 3D on him. Because if I knock him down, I've got my E blow. Nothing. And he can get in the way there. Mm, he could blitz somebody. He could blitz a ghoul. So yeah, he probably has to get tagged by him. And then he can only get one deed. Now the white or the zombie can only get one deed. So this is okay. Maybe I could have put the ball there. But again, if I put it there, then maybe he can like... Me oh no, I actually couldn't have gotten to the assist. So yeah, so this would have been... No, no, this guy could have run all the way through there. But he couldn't have made it uh, anything other than uphill. So yeah, I actually could have moved him. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this was my fault. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I, I, he could have been stood there. Th this way I do get my extra turn, right? So I do get to uh, blitz this Saurus. So I didn't want to get pushed into the end zone early. Like even though it's turn seven. I'd still rather block things. And at some point, I probably should have uh, made a foul. Probably should have. Right, I can, I can three dice this, I'm sure. Yep, there we go. That's nine. So you've got two out of three KOs back, but he, <laughs> he hasn't got much, has he? <laughs> they look so bad when they're down Saurus. So yeah, this is uh, this is a very rough game for him. Not a lot he could have done. Definitely going to try and score on the, on the this school. Probably pretty quickly as well, go for the 3 now. Mummy hit 
pops on the LOS. Just have to play it safe for the ball at all times. It's taken me a long time to scope this goal. I don't know what I've been playing at, honestly. But I'm trying not to put my myself under pressure to like win games and stuff, so I don't. I'm not sad about it. Right, so I want to make the safe block with block first, and I've got two safe blocks with block, which gives me the mummy blitz for this guy. And... Zombies in there. Ghouls. Protecting against a blitz result a little bit. All the ghouls around. Kick, yes, you. Right, so safe moves. Is move this guy over here. Move this guy here. And then block this fellow. Don't dub skull. Right, so I still really want to punch him. I think I want to move this guy in first. Just to cover the failure state a little bit. And now he can come out here. So now the ball is like quite defended for picking it up. In fact, I'll go here. And here. So now now the ball's very protected. Which seems good. So I can do a blockless block. Yeah. I could have eaten the, the both down there or something. But don't have to get him in as well. So all of his sores are down, that's good. And then try and go in here. In fact, I can go another one forward, can't I? Uh, well, I need to bring up the ghouls with me, so there's no need to get ahead of the ghouls. This is a little bit safer, he's going to make multiple dodges to hit me. So, we're looking at a four turn score. Deliberately, like, played this a little bit safer. You know, could have got this in three turns. But let's just go a little bit safer, make sure the Saurus are dealt with. And uh, four turns should be enough to turn him over and score. Okay. Like no skink swarm is possible at all now, is there? Sucked a little bit that he was able to hit my guard. quite liked it being in the centre though for like the LOS hits but this this guy was always going to get more protected so maybe I should, shouldn't have had them the way they were so maybe like a minor positional error there
<laughs> so at the moment we're like kind of playing different games because he's he is trying to stop the score and I'm trying to get there for 3-0 it's not really uh... right so what I want to do is I want to blitz this guy and then knock everything down up here and I want to break through here so this this block is the most crucial one and I might actually switch my blitz target if I don't knock him over I think I just make this hit first. Get the power. Beautiful. Right. That means he can come up. He can come up. And that is basically everything alright. punch him, the zombie gets to go there. I like this zombie coming in here. That seems a really good square. I'm going to put him in there. And I'm going to assist here. So I'm going to think about this guy. I don't really know where this guy wants to go. So I'm going to just hold him for later. It's not terrible to do that, is it? And we get a 2D with block. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to kill the skinks. Thank you, uh, Steve. I probably should have talked about, you know, what you need to do to win matchups and stuff. And in this case, that is the Reddit advice. Simply kill the skinks. But first of all, killing skinks isn't that easy. And second of all, it's not even how you win. You win by removing Saurus. So... The opponent graciously helped us with that <laughs> by only starting with four. So that was the game almost already won, right? By only having four Saurus and a Crocs at the start of the game, the game was almost just already instantly won. Um, so yeah, but yeah, the, the killing Skinks, like it's, it's the thing with Skinks is you can just control them, right? If you just put like a block player on them, the, it's already getting bad for them. It's about it's about the trades, right? Like, you know, if you think... I, I don't know what it comes from apart from Magic the Gathering, but I know in Magic the Gathering you have, like, trades where, you know, like, you make one-for-one one trades or two-for-one one trades and stuff, like... Um, and it's the sign of kiss, kind of the same concept, right? Like, so you've got Lightning Bolt does three damage, right? And you've got, like, a 3-3 three, three creature does three damage, can take three damage before it dies. So if you Lightning Bolt it, it's a one-for-one one trade. And then if you've got, if your opponent's got four of those creatures and you play Wrath of God, it kills all the creatures. So it's a four to one trade, four for one trade. So you've got that kind of concept of like card advantage. And it's the same kind of thing with Blood Bowl that you have like positional advantage, right? And so if you can trade off like your zombie for his Saurus, that's a great trade. Because now they're just punching, it's like punching sand, isn't it? They're just, uh... Uh, you know, you're you're getting one of their best players, one of your worst players. That's a great. Now, of course, it kind of sucks they are getting punched, but someone's probably going to get punched. That's okay. So, so the trades that you, you you want are your worst players or your stronger players on their Saurus, and then like your block players on their Skinks, because as long as it's not easy for their Skinks to hit your block players, now they have to dodge, and each time they dodge, it's a one in nine they fail. So that's pretty decent odds. And if even if you just get to hit Skinks with block. You know, it's making a big difference, 55% to knock them down instead of 30%. So even just hitting them with block is very, very good. They, they don't like getting hit with blocks, kings. But they just don't like getting based either. Whereas if Saurus aren't knocked over, then they're going to be punching you on two dice probably, right? Because they're strength four. So you really have to... It's much more important to knock over Saurus and base skinks. So there you go. <laughs> That was a good little sentence, wasn't it? <laughs> Does it come from chess? But card advantage doesn't come from chess. Card advantage has to come from, like, trading card games, doesn't it? Or, like, something else. Yeah, trade upon for a knight, yeah. That makes sense. 
but you, you know you don't have to just do it with that right you don't have to do it with I mean that that's a, that that's a concept of trade but then also it's like two for one trades and stuff are not the same are they but yeah quality trades I guess work oh wow he just did a jump for no reason <laughs> love it <laughs> he could have just literally <laughs> come up from the top and dodged with dodge but he, he did a jump it was fun well done yeah I mean, just the concept of trades and like I mean card advantage has to come from magic right or like TCGs or, or games like that the concept of card advantage um, which this isn't really card advantage but it's a somewhat similar kind of idea right block with block are there safe moves I can do first not really I, there probably are pl pl squares for these guys to go that are all better but this is a two dice with blocks I'm just going to make it right pow good um, it's two GFIs to score, so I'm not going to score. Ah, do you know what I'll do? I'll go to here and make it a little bit of a screen. That's nice, isn't it? Go for a 3D on the, on the leap guy just because he likes him. <laughs> mean, but uh, for, and I could have made that a 3 dice with block, right? But ultimately, um, I've got Mighty Blow and I just want to hurt his players. So now I've got all sorts of screens and multi screens and we've still got like the eye cage where there's no no way to make it anything but an uphill. Um yeah, go for this guy. Get away from the Saurus. It kinda it sucks that he can hit a white, but at least it's a skillless white. <laughs> Card advantage, yeah. It's like resource advantage, I guess. Is that just a... Thanks, Sprungenio. Yeah, like, that, I'm, glad, I'm glad somebody benefited from it because that's the kind of idea of... of, you know, why Reddit is wrong. <laughs> Basically. And hello, Frosty. Glorious to see you. Why? Like, obviously it's good to remove skins, right? But it's not really going to win you the game in the same way as removing Saurus does. You can control skins, and you can't control Saurus, basically. I guess is, is the simplicity of it. Oh, he's going to do his leap again. He loves his leap. It's just strictly worse than dodging. <laughs> but he's like, I've got leap and I'm going to use it. <laughs> um, I don't know if he knows how stunt he works and he thinks this is better or if he's just a mad lad. Um, but, you know, fair play to him. He could just be new and not know, right? He could just be new and not know how stunt he works. Yes, of course, Stradikin, like presenting um, targets that you would ra they rather they hit is, is the biggest thing, but yeah. Hunting. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, you want to hit everything. Like, you just want to hit everything. But essentially the thing about, you know, to beat lizard men, simply remove the skinks. It's just... Removing the skinks doesn't do enough. Because you can just base a skink. 
and it's almost removed, right? <laughs> but if you you've got to do a lot more than base a base a saurus to remove it. Um, having said that, I'm going to go for the blitz here. 3D with block. Now I'm just doing it for like SPP, right? So like in terms of the game, it was better to block the Saurus. Because if I removed him, it'd be great. But um, that's more chance for Kaz. And come back up to protect the ball in case I won an 81 this block. there's no way I'm not going to punch him. Right, so that's dirty player on the sneaky kit. That's fantastic. Now I can foul a lot in the future. And yeah, Okay, let's go a little bit wider. bit further forward to put the pressure on to get the turnover and score. So this is like aggressive chevrons, right? Normal chevrons would be two squares back because you're scared of a, a quick snap. You're not scared of it, but you know it protects against the quick snap, which happens a fair amount of the time. But if if you're not scared of the quick snap, the aggressive chevrons protect the middle better because you don't have this space them to knock people over and then maneuver around these players so aggressive chevrons is generally a better defense but susceptible to quick snaps um i would i would say so strat dk yes because here's the thing chess is like you know i'm sure if you asked magnus carlson he'd say he could learn more right because he just definitely can. <laughs> I don't know about a lot more. But then, you know, chess has got like years and years and years and years and years, not even years, centuries of like accumulated knowledge, hasn't it? Like loads of books written about it, everything. And like, there's just tons and tons and tons of stuff there. And people have spent years and years and years learning things. And then in Blood Bowl, you've got a bunch of dudes who have played it for a long time, you know, to be fair, we've played it for a long time, but how much have we made a concerted effort to learn things and get better, right? Like, not much, you know? Ultimately, not much. So, I've got six players here. The ball may well be a touchback. I've got to be wary of the touchback. I don't get a user reroll, so blitzing this guy without block really sucks. But it's really good if it works, isn't it? So I think I have to. Uh, I think I have to just first of all move, move these players in here. Just now, now go for this blitz. Be okay, good. And then this base is good, right? If uh, I could like move over, but I think I just want to. Um, Run forward. <laughs> run forward this guy so we can score. Maybe I wanted to run two players forward in case it's not a touchback. This guy's got block. Let's get like in the danger zone here. So I like control these guys. Even thinking about dodging off or anything. So I didn't really play this super well, right? Like I could have thought about ways to protect against him just dodging through the line and stuff. But threatening the surf on the Saurus, containing his LOS, 
and then putting forward like a threatening player is okay. Yeah. So yeah, could have blitzed for the white, but you know, blitzing with mighty blow is just more fun, isn't it? And it was a long way to go for the white, and it would need two assists. It was it was a it was kind of a big commitment to blitz it with the white, and also you don't have to pay off a smashing with mighty blow. <laughs> so this way we got a lot of players on the Saurus, so we we completely lock these Saurus down doing it this way. Um. Yeah, yeah, that's true, Stradi K. But yeah, like. That's the thing, isn't it? Like, Blood Bowl doesn't have to be as deep as chess for it to be not as mastered, right? So, yeah, people definitely haven't mastered Blood Bowl as much as they've mastered chess. Now, you can argue that it's harder to master Blood Bowl due to, you know, all of the branching probability trees, whereas, um, whereas you don't have that with chess, do you? But obviously with chess, you've got, like, millions of moves. It's it's like I don't know, like it's it's weird, right? It is weird because um, it makes you wonder how much difference a lot of the things make in Blood Bowl. Honestly, like I wonder how much a lot of the decisions make. Maybe not too much. I'm just gonna three dice him with block. Get the foul. Don't follow. <laughs> Where's the ball going? Okay, right to the sneaky get dirty play. He's already scored. I want to score on this guy now, don't I? Right, surf this fella, please. Yep. And block this dude. And yeah, blockless block first is fine, right? I've got so many rerolls, I just don't really care about what I'm doing now at this point, to be honest. <laughs> he can get in there. He can go up there. Yeah. I don't really care so much about that. I want I want to get the ball on him and move up the field. Good. And then I want to foul. No, no, I want to punch first. I want to punch first. Let's punch first. Get a pow. Brilliant. And then foul. Finally, you get to make a foul with a sneaky git because he's got dirty player this game. Nothing. Brilliant. Yes, you know, like, I'm, I'm not saying that it's harder to master Blood Bowl and chess because the, the randomness is weird, right? The randomness is weird, like... But it's harder in that there's no resources to learn from and people aren't really trying to learn to be the best at Blood Bowl, right? Whereas people are trying to be the best at chess. So I'm sure that the, the best players at Blood Bowl could be loads better. But then there's, there's obviously much more decreasing returns of getting better at Blood Bowl, isn't there, compared to chess? Because with chess, the best player just wins. Like, they just literally just win, don't they? Do I uh, blitz with the ball because I've got block? Probably. As much as I'd love to blitz with my uh, mummy for a mighty blow hit. I'm just going to blitz with the ball. Saw that. I can just definitely get forward. Oh, 
Um, <laughs> I've got the slight problem of them just making one dodge here. So I'm going to have to block diagonally now. Okay, good. And he's going to have to block as well. Good. Okay, and now that's completely safe versus the Saurus. Because he got a double dodge. Well, it's not completely safe, is it? But it's very good. It's surprising how hard it is to play while thinking about things and saying things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the resources for chess, like, completely dwarf Blood Bowl. And the same for other things, right? Even, like, Magic, right? Which is also, like, you know, relatively... About, probably about the same age, right? 94 is when 3rd edition Blood Bowl came out. So probably, um... Probably Magic is about the same age overall as uh, Blood Bowl is. Um, so, like, there's a lot of resources for magic and stuff, a lot of theory with magic, right? You know, definitive things like card advantage, etc. That just isn't isn't in Blood Bowl, right? Apart from me, like, saying it today <laughs> and stuff. So, yeah, there's, there's just really... It just hasn't been taken seriously enough by enough, like maybe, maybe somebody has taken it super seriously, but it hasn't been taken seriously enough by enough people um, to have like, you know to the point where I don't think any good player should be able, should be thinking to themselves you know, oh yes I couldn't get much better, but the question is, because of all the dice how much better would be how much difference would it make being much better and that's the thing, you know, um, Eliod was saying he didn't think that um, Magnus Carlsen would be that much better than Kefog, for example. Whereas I feel like he probably would be. <laughs> But who, who knows? But he couldn't be, because he, he couldn't be at the same level he is at chess as he is in Blood Bowl. Like, just, just, that's just not possible, is it? So, But anyway, I mean, this this game's over now, pretty much, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I didn't, no, I didn't argue the call, it just took a while. So I'm just leaving the zombies on here just to get punched, right? There's no need to... Uh... I could have put my mummies on and stuff and tried to, tried to bully him out of it, but... Even then, even if, like, he could uphill me and power me and kill my mummies. There's just no need. There's no need to take that chance. He's not going to want to run and pressure my mummies now. Because he can die. his Saurus can die. He doesn't want his Saurus to die. So this just lets us both um, both be happy about everything. <laughs> you know, and that, that, that does add up, like, the protecting your players, right? I'm always thinking in, in resurrection... Well, not resurrection. In non-resurrection environments... Like in progression environments, I'm always thinking about keeping my best players safe as possible. Um, because every hit you can take and kill you, right? Like even a mummy. It, it's still just AV 10 plus, so that's a 1 in 6 to break AV. And then um, a 1 in 6 to be cast. It's not crazy, is it? And then a 1 in 4 to fail regen. And they're not too easy to get, to get killed. They're not too difficult to get killed. I mean, it's not easy, but then it's not ridiculous to see a dead mummy, so... But it is very, very bad for your team to have a dead mummy. So if you do literally everything you can to stop them getting killed, then, uh, you know, that's all you can do, isn't it? I am going to make this a three dice without block, so it's slightly suboptimal in terms of that. But, you know, I want block and mummies, so I want the SPPs. I'll take that tiny little bit more risk. I don't need to move them out of the way, actually, do I? I'll just go around here. So we go, got 3 0. Got a touchdown on a white, which was good. 
got the two touchdowns on the sneaky git, so he gets dirty play. And he sent off, so can't die. Perfect. And do these have any SPPs? No. He can kill all of these if he wants. Yeah, Power World is getting sued, yeah. I'm kind of surprised because they're not, you know, they're not that copied, are they? Like, it's a similar kind of thing, right? Monsters in balls. But it's, uh, who's to say that isn't just a genre, right? Like, you know, like FPS, whoever made the first FPS game, like, I don't know if it was Doom or whatever, but whoever made the first one can't really sue all the other FPS people, can they? So can the first Monsters in Balls game sue all of the other Monsters in Balls makers? I think it'd be pretty pretty shocking if they won, but then Nintendo have got a lot of money, haven't they? So they'll probably win. <laughs> that seems to be the most decisive factor in court cases. Yeah, there, and yeah, strategy here. That is a good point about blue ball spotting the right moves because yeah, you know, if you gave if you gave all of the top players loads of time, you'd probably all arrive at the same solution to a lot of things. But then, yeah, you've got to see things in, in the time, haven't you? But also, we'll always make mistakes, won't we? Like, that's something. That's you're never going to get away from like making mistakes. But I guess the best players can make less mistakes than other people as well. It's interesting, I wonder what makes the best players the best players. Because um, <laughs> the only real the only real criteria I have when I'm thinking whether somebody's a great player or not is thinking if they do what I do. <laughs> Which, you know, um, that, you know, if I, like I think this is good. You know, like after they've done it, I think, oh, that was a good turn or whatever. Or I think... I'll often just, you know, say, well, I do this, and then that's what they do, and I think, ah, well, that means they're good, doesn't it? But, like, that doesn't mean that I know the best, does it? But that's the only way I can judge it. I can't... There's no, like... You know, it's not like just, you know, you run a 9.62, and then, you know, right, he's good at 100 metres. There's no, like, objective thing. I mean, I guess you can look at their win rates and stuff, but, again, there's so much goes into win rates that that's not exactly the be-all and end-all. The great back line, indeed, so, yep. Yeah. My greats do back in <laughs> Very good, Dimmy. Yeah. Mm, there you go, Pendo with the knowledge. Yep, that's a very good point, Dimmy. That is well done. Thanks for thanks for reminding me. I'd totally forgotten about it for a few minutes. <laughs> but yeah, you know, like look, at the end of the day, backlining removes your chance of a mistake, doesn't it? Whereas Yes, you can make a stronger defence than backlining by putting things in better squares, but you can also make mistakes. Yeah, that's a very good point as well, Stradi. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, lots of factors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Souls. Souls 3 gutter runners removed on the same turn was a, was a definitely a, a great... A great rival to my two players served in the first two turns. So there you go. That wasn't much of a game. I don't know how... You know, he's level 43. So I don't know if he even knows what's, what stunty does. Because he was intent on leaping. That could be just because he doesn't know what stunty is. Or because he just thought it was funny because he'd already lost. But whatever it was, it was, a, it was a very rough match for him. You know, he should have... He should have six Saurus and a Crocs. And, uh, yeah, not make any other team build than six Saurus and one Crocs. But there you go, anyway. It was... It was a win, it happened. Hopefully there was some things in there, like how to beat lizards, you know, that was in there somewhere for the YouTubes. So uh, thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.